Okay, YouTubers, let me try to, let's do another one here. Let's look at, again, this, this strikes to control of information. And if you look right here, this is an interesting, someone with the NRC prepared a series of Q&As. And, re, and remember, Q&As were part of the prefabricated talking points, press releases, Q&As to control the information, this massive government multi-agency orchestrated cover-up of the radioactive plume and cloud. Now here's a series of uh, frequently asked questions, FAQ, F-A-Q, facts, right? And is in the form of questions and answers that someone has put together regarding the Price-Anderson Act, of which I was not familiar with. But it is a federal law where they have this fund and these insurance companies or the nuclear power plants have to get insurance to some degree. And so it says there's a pool of money contains about $12.6 in the event there is a nuclear disaster. Beyond that, Congress would have to uh, fund uh, any further damages as a result of a nuclear power plant accident. Now that, let me go back real quick. I shouldn't, let me just back up one second. Uh, if you look here, it's kind of extensive actually. I learned a lot from it. Uh, uh, even though it was a Q&A format, and undoubtedly there's something they're not revealing here. But if you look, it's fairly thorough as far as the subject, the Q&As, it's got 10 different uh, Q and A's, questions and answers. They try to control the question. They try to control the answer. But now here's the interesting thing. Right next to this in these documents, let me read you this chain of emails from Bernal Scott to L.A. Brenner, a number of others, David McIntyre, some of these big players in the cover-up. And he says, these are good to go, folks. And this is subject, Price Anderson, QA, ready for you. So in regard to the Q and A's we just looked at, uh, Scott Burnell saying, good to go. These are good to go. Okay, next response from Elizabeth Hayden. RE, Price Anderson QA, ready for use. Are these appropriate for the web? She asks. His response, Scott Burnell, I don't see why not. Her response, or, or Holly Harrington chimes in and says, I think we should discuss first before opening this can of worms. I'm not seeing slash hearing a lot of questions about this, and if we post it, we may create an issue where one does not currently exist. Elizabeth Hayden chimes back and says, agree. I'm not sure why these questions came up anyway. <laughs> Holly Harrington, I don't remember where the request came from, but at least we have something should we need it down the road. Okay, and that's the end of that little uh, back and forth right there. But clearly you can see they're not forthcoming with information. If we don't ask, they don't want to respond. They don't want to promote. They don't want to extend the information. You have to ask for it. Then when you do, you're going to get a Q&A, which they're controlling the information there very tightly. You're not going to get a forthright, frank response from these people. It's like, again, it's like pulling teeth. And it just, just strikes to the fact that nuclear power is not a safe form of energy production, period, end of story. The fact they don't want to have this discussion about insurance and damages resulting from a nuclear power plant accident. They didn't want to open that can of worms. You know what I'm saying? So, wow, it just really, their own words speak for themselves, does it not? Okay, Hattrick Penny, I thought you might find that one interesting, that the Q&A is about the Price-Anderson Act. I'll give you the... A link to this PDF file so you can read these series of Q and A's on the Price Anderson Act. It's something I've really got to dig into a little more about the insurance and, and what have you in regards to just how much is 12.6 billion going to cover. If you look at Fukushima, 12.6 billion could be just a drop in the bucket, right? Something to think about. Okay, Patrick Penry, thanks for joining me. Over and out. Ladies and gentlemen, it is for me a great honor and a real pleasure to participate in this memorable event. In 1956, the Cold War was at its height. Nuclear war was menacing mankind. 
and my privacy alleged that the world was on the verge of total destruction. Today, the consequences of Fukushima threaten the world. Unit 4 contains 10 times more cesium-137 than Chernobyl. A strong earthquake could mean collapse. The Japanese people realize from experience that nuclear energy generates unacceptable calamities. The collapse of Unit 4 could be one. Japan must assume the historic role of promoting denuclearization, both civilian and military. Ignoring the conditions of the Fukushima, nuclear reactors continue to be promoted at home and abroad. Fukushima must not be forgotten. In the name of the victims and 170,000 refugees, I call for a total ban of nuclear energy. The world must realize that any radioactive contamination creates immense and permanent harm for mankind and the Earth. Three Mile Island, Chernobyl and Fukushima are no less dreadful than atomic bombs. Nuclear reactors are potential super bombs. No single weapon can compete with the potential damage that can be caused by Fukushima Unit 4 or uh, reprocessing plants. The Fukushima accident could have been more catastrophic for Japan and the world. The still present danger of a collapse of the Unit 4 after an intensity 7 earthquake must be broadcast the world over. Sound judgment would not have permitted construction of 54 nuclear reactors in a Japan menaced by frequent earthquakes and tsunamis. Only the lack of ethics and responsibility made it possible. Money and the corruption of power plant management sow the seeds of catastrophe. This is not limited to Japan. The same technology that produces nuclear energy produces nuclear weapons. The proliferation of nuclear power plants leads to the proliferation of nuclear weapons as we are seeing today in North Korea and Iran. There is no way to ensure the safety of future generations except to eliminate the use of nuclear fission technology across the planet. The lack of ethics and responsibility is highlighted by the absence of a solution for nuclear waste that threatens future generations. The Japanese nuclear village or nuclear dictatorship envisions the restarting and the export of nuclear reactors, thus regaining the offensive for the Japanese nuclear industry. This is immoral. It shows no sense of international or intergenerational responsibility. Alas, I fear it will last. Japan should warn the world of the consequences of not heading towards denuclearization. Eight years ago, I predicted that Japan, Japanese electric companies would decide Japan's fate. Two years ago, at the World Congress of International Physicians for the Prevention of Nuclear War in Basel, I pleaded for mobilizing human wisdom to avert the ultimate catastrophe a nuclear calamity could produce. Sadly, these warnings did not deter my fears. Considering the worldwide consequences of a nuclear accident, countries not possessing nuclear reactors should urge denuclearization, be it military or civilian. Countries already opting for nuclear energy should do so as well. Originally, Japan had a maternal culture characterized by harmony and solidarity. After the major restoration was introduced to Japan, a paternal culture characterized by competition and confrontation in military form. History shows that paternal cultures end in catastrophe. 
Fukushima is the result of the supremacy of economy, another form of paternal culture introduced after World War II. The maternal culture of harmony is the remedy for the paternal culture of power. Nuclear accidents cause limitless consequences unacceptable to human society. Fukushima is a reminder that the possibilities of such a disaster should be completely zero. The great principle of a world without nuclear weapons and reactors should not be forgotten. The transition to maternal civilization is a prerequisite for this vision. Today, mankind faces a crisis of civilization. The true cause is lack of ethics. Fundamental ethics would prohibit the abuse and exhaustion of natural resources, leaving permanently poisonous waste and enormous deaths in its wake. Global ethics requires maternal culture, respecting the environment and interests of future generations. Three transitions are necessary. Turn selfishness to solidarity, greed to contentment, and materialism to spiritualism. Natural and renewable energies could amply supply the needs of such a civilization with a transitional period supplemented by fossil fuels. We must prepare to make the short-term sacrifices in our lifestyles for the long-term safety of mankind and the Earth without nuclear energy. The proposal to hold the United Nations Ethics Summit draws more global attention. The trinity of global ethics, maternal civilization, and true denuclearization should become a reality. President Obama's vision of the world without nuclear weapons needs to become the world without nuclear weapons and nuclear reactors. The UN Ethics Summit is the first concrete step. I ardently hope that President Obama takes the initiative to realize this summit and create an International Day of Global Ethics to serve as a yearly reminder. Initially, controversy over content should be carefully avoided. In concluding, let me say the following. The critical situation at Fukushima requires the mobilization of human wisdom on the widest possible scale. The pressing need for setting up a neutral assessment team as well as an international technical cooperation team is evident. The fuel rods in the decaying cooling pool of Unit 4 must be moved to another place as soon as possible. It is a global security issue requiring maximum efforts which regrettably are not being made. More and more Japanese are awakening to the real dangers of nuclear accident and nuclear reactors. Japan is thus heading steadily towards establishing zero dependency on nuclear energy. The will of heaven and earth is my translation of providence as philosophy, protecting mankind and the earth. It will help achieve true denuclearization, civil and military, in due course. The rage of those who lost all will continue to enliven anti-nuclear movements in Japan and eventually abroad. Japan must now contribute to the realization of true denuclearization. Then the victims of Hiroshima, Nagasaki, and Fukushima will not have suffered in vain. Thank you. We need to get subscribed and get this unity stronger and beat YouTube at their own game. Okay, that's what this is about. Like I say, go to the Remix button, hit the Remix button. That way you'll have this video and, and keep up with this. Otherwise, you know, YouTube's just going to control us, guys, and it's, it's really bad.